was at a space like last year uh, sometime in earlier this year where I was just super like anxious about everything and depressed and you know worried and fearful all of those things I was at that stage where I just I wasn't good I wasn't good I wasn't okay you know at some points I felt like I was losing my mind I was losing myself in the end I was able to overcome it I was able to beat the odds and overcome those feelings of sadness and depression and anxiety and worry and fear and all of that I was able to overcome it without any medical treatment without going to a doctor I was never even clinically diagnosed with those things but I just know that I was at a bad space and I knew that I had a lot of symptoms of anxiety and depression I'm not saying that those th those things and those people are not good ways to help alleviate those feelings because they are this is why they are there but I like a more natural approach I like natural things you know you see that's why I kind of stopped wearing weave and decided to lock my hair because I just want to embrace a more natural aspect of life I kind of stumbled upon like ways to help me overcome these issues unknowingly and so I want to share them with people who may still be going through that or may still be trying to work through their own inner issues. But first, let me tell you why I feel like I got to a space where I just I wasn't happy and I was honestly OK with any day being my last day but now I am grateful to be alive I want to be alive because it gives me a chance to correct the wrongs that I have done in my life and it gives me a, a chance and another opportunity to work on being successful and being wealthy I went from like not caring if I live or died to being grateful for my life every day and for the lives of those around me Prior to the year 2018, I was experiencing a series of negative things. Like two years ago, two or three years ago, I was with a guy, I was dating a guy who I had invited him, like bought him around my family, bought him around, like he met a few of my friends. And, you know, I felt like I was in love or whatever. He talked a really good game in the beginning. Like he was actually trying to get me to move in with him. Um, but I felt like it was too soon and that's the thing y'all like when you don't when you're really not sure of yourself when you really still have a lot of issues going on you don't really know how to love nobody you don't really know what being in love is until you figure out like your own inner issues you know what love should feel like and you know what being in love is and what is not but then I thought I was so in love and you know, he asked me to move in with him, but I just felt like it was too soon. It, we had only been dating for like two months and he had asked if I would move in with him. I just thought it was too soon. So I was like, no. And, you know, when the relationship didn't work out the way that I was hoping that it did, you know, I, the, the one of the first things I thought about myself was, you know, what's wrong with me? You know, what did I do wrong? Maybe I should have moved in with him. That would have, you know, helped maybe I should have did should have could have would you know all of that when really in turn there's nothing wrong with you but at that time where you think like you know this person like nobody else really loved me more than this person did and you know you think all of those type of things so and especially when the person has their own issues or like they might show signs of like narcissism or whatever they have a good way of making it seem like everything is you 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 and something is wrong with you well really it's nothing wrong with you it's something wrong with them that they haven't worked out i was very very heartbroken over the breakup because and then the way that we broke up like um um he cheated <laughs> and i honestly i felt I had felt all along that he was cheating um, maybe not the whole relationship but I definitely had a suspicion way before we even broke up it was his birthday I was like um, you know like I really want to celebrate your birthday with you but I'm off your birthday weekend maybe 
do something like um the weekend before the weekend before his birthday i was saying like let's do something then because i'm off and i want to celebrate with you or whatever long story short he didn't want to do that and at that time i was going through a really hard time you know anyway um had some other stuff going on so he didn't want to do it he wanted to celebrate it on when he wanted to celebrate it so i was like okay well you know whatever i just won't be able to be there because i have to work whatever i was working third shift at that time before the birthday thing like i was over his place and then he was like on the phone and it seemed you could just tell the difference when a guy is talking to a female and when they talk to one of their homeboys and this is definitely a female and he was pretty much asking them where they're gonna be at his party and they were clearly like yeah whatever so i felt a certain way about that but like i didn't say anything about it because i don't know i just didn't want to upset him but nowadays like and that's another thing y'all stick up for yourself when you see stuff that you don't like or there's an issue with something don't let nobody feel, make you feel like you can't say nothing speak your mind okay <laughs> do not love but speak your mind stand up for yourself like there is no way now that if somebody called my boyfriend now like that and i felt like that that there's no way that i would not say anything i was just so naive and anyway so that happened and that was when i was with him like a couple days before his birthday thing or whatever then like his birthday thing happened i didn't go back over his place until like maybe the the following weekend but i knew that like when i got there i saw like a condom like in the top like at the top of his trash can in his bathroom and so i was like i don't think that he did anything but I know that I haven't been over here in like a week and that wouldn't still be sitting right there like unless you're just that dirty and you don't take your trash out but it's like right there at the top and then when I went in his room like it was like this scarf laying on the floor and this scarf used to be in the back of his closet that he never used I, I used to use it to wrap my head up he didn't even I still actually still got the scarf it's a red scarf I never gave it back and I'm not going to <laughs> I didn't notice the scarf at first until I went in the closet to look for it and I was like do you have like a head thing or whatever so I can wrap my hair up and he was like oh no and then that's when I came out of the closet and saw it on the floor and I was like well why is this on the floor and he was like oh I don't know I was just cleaning up whatever so when you clean up you take a scarf from the back of your closet and throw it on the floor yeah okay but yeah, I could tell he was trying to like cover up it for it or whatever and I was like you know what never mind and I actually had bought right before I went over there um I used to go to Walmart like before I went over there and I would get like some lounge clothes every time just a waste of money right but anyway <laughs> and that, so I had when I went to Walmart I had picked up a bandana anyway so I was like you know what never mind I don't know where this been um I said I have a bandana and I'll just use that and he was like it hasn't been anywhere da, da, da. <sighs> anyway so fast forward to the breakup he was already with somebody else and and then after we broke up and I looked at his page like we had only been broken up for like maybe a week if that if we were even broken up at the time and he already had the girl like in in his apartment cooking like he had posted a video on Instagram of her cooking well she I don't believe that she knew of me because he was a great liar and he talks a great game so I, I didn't know the girl from anywhere I didn't even I think she was from like Shelby so I'm like how you know some, how you meet somebody from Shelby um, Shelby North Carolina and you don't stay in Shelby <laughs> he had another girlfriend like very very quickly probably before we even broke up he had her and um I f honestly I wasn't upset with her because like I said I don't think she knew about me or anything I definitely know for a fact it was all him and his lies but I felt bad for her because I could tell in the pictures that they took like she was so happy and I just knew that it wasn't going to end good because if you can do that to somebody and be in a whole nother relationship and have this girl in love with you that quick, you're not, 
you're not changed you're not a changed person so i felt bad for her because i saw how happy she looked in her pictures with him and i just knew that it wasn't going to end good for her and i wanted to reach out to her but and my mom was like some people are not going to believe she but she so she seems like she's so in love with him she's probably not going to believe you she's probably going to think you're jealous or whatever so I just had to kind of let her learn that on her own. But I really did want to reach out to her and let her know. But I was like, you know, she probably isn't really going to listen to me. And she's probably going to think I'm jealous or whatever. So, but no, I really felt bad for her because I knew how it was going to end. And do you think they're still together now? No. <laughs> and, you know, I had actually ran into the both of them at a club one time and um it would just kind of confirm what i was already feeling um but this was like maybe a month or two after we had been broken up or two to three months after we had been broken up and i saw him there with her but i just acted like i didn't see him and at that time i had this guy friend who was there with me anyway so i was like you know what let's go dance you know forget him you know because i was i was about to make myself be in a space where i felt like i wanted to go home like i didn't even want to be there anymore but um when I saw my guy friend there I was like you know what screw that I'm about to make him mad <laughs> so I was like let's go dance so whatever and we did guess who messages me before the night is even over on Facebook trying to talk some game I was like boy I already know that you was there with the girl um I said I'm pretty sure she would be unhappy with you trying to mend things with your ex and he was like asking me like what my family thought about him and stuff this you ain't shit and you did some fucked up shit so like, they think you ain't shit just like i think you ain't shit <laughs> so like and why are you in my inbox right now you got a whole girl that you was just at the club with and before the before i even got home that night you messaging me like dude really get it together you got a whole girl over here got her cooking your meals and shit thinking that she about to be your next wife and you messaging me like you are so trifling and he was just like yeah you know we can we be friends no i need to be your friend i need to be your friend so i was just like but anyway i was very heartbroken over that and it hurt it hurt it hurt and i didn't give myself time to move on from that before i was like entertaining other people and hanging out with them and i couldn't be good for them when i was still hurting on the inside like you can't you can't be good for people when you still have hurt so anyway i was still hurting from that it was an ultimate blow to my self-esteem because i just was like you know even though our relationship wasn't perfect i i haven't done everything the best way but really <laughs> so i was i was just sad i was sad um and it makes me sad thinking about how sad i was then it really does but i was there i started hanging out with other people and i just went wild like y'all when i tell y'all i went wild like i was just doing things that wasn't even me like having sex with people i shouldn't have sex with like my self-esteem was just shot like i didn't my feelings like i mean there were a few people in that time that i did actually meet and i did actually really like but i knew that i knew that i wasn't going to be able to be what they needed me to be because i just wasn't there like i was still hurt i was still reeling over a breakup like even a year later i was still heartbroken um still doing things that you know wasn't benefiting me but i was just acting out of hurt and so i would like start these situations with people and i would just disappear you know not really giving a notice not telling like why am i going to stop talking to them i'll just disappear you know just doing hurtful things like hurt people hurt people so i was in a very hurt space and then on top of that so i'm starting to entertain more people and there was this one person who i got in closer to it started on a friendship level because you know i just i like to talk i'm a talkative person once you get to know me but when i when i don't like to talk about me mediocre things i like to talk about really interesting topics like I, I like to debate sometimes i like stuff like that and that's kind of how he was like he was um he was a communicator and so that's kind of like how i started to get drawn to him 
Um, but he was a bad boy. He was. But he, he had a good heart, though. Just like me, I was like, at that time, I was a bad girl. Now I'm a good girl. <laughs> but I was a bad girl, but I had a good heart. I had a good heart. Like, But it was just that bad things happened to me, so it just kind of in turn made me become what I didn't want to be you know made me become the person who is hurting people because I've been hurt so in turn when you hurt people you also get hurt in the same time so you it's like you're giving hurt and you're taking hurt at the same time and that was a pattern that was a pattern that I didn't want to repeat I didn't realize it in that time but I started hanging out with this guy and you know like I said he he was a communicator he talked and that's how you that's I, I like conversation I like meaningful conversation I don't want to talk about like shoes and I don't want to talk about name brand stuff like or other celebrities and what they got going on like I want to talk about stuff that means something to me you know I like deep conversations I like conversations that make you think and that's how he was like and he was opening up and telling me about some of the experiences that he experienced in his life and how he's grown from them. And then I saw the growth from it. But, you know, he also still had his issues. So we started hanging out and we started being intimate, which we shouldn't have because just the basis of it, we just shouldn't have. Neither one of us really knew each other. Yes, we had good conversations, but we didn't really know what made each other click. It just wasn't in a situation where we needed to be doing those type of physical things at all. Um, but, you know, what's done is done. I did all that shit. Like, prior to 2018, people can break up my past. I probably did it. The only thing I haven't done was did anything that got me sent to jail. But, <laughs> yes, I probably did it. I've been a hoe. I've been, you know, I've been promiscuous. I've been hurt and I've hurt people you know I've, I've done it so I mean I can't be ashamed for something that I've done just as long as that's not who I am now and that's not who I strive to be now you can people actually can change you just have to want to do the work and you have to actually change <laughs> can't say I want to change and then don't <laughs> anyway um yeah so me and this guy we started hanging out and like I said this is post the breakup still like having this feelings of hurt that I have not dealt with and long story short um we have been hung hanging out we met at uh, we used to work together and then um certain people will know who I'm talking about but I'm not going to use names because I'm not that type of person like I still know at the end of the day he is a good person he just was hurt at that moment and he made some stupid decisions just like I have and I want to be forgiven for the stupid decisions that I've made so I also have to give forgiveness and that is a part of healing anxiety and depression being able to forgive you know when people hurt you stop holding on to all of this harbor like anger and resentment you know what I mean and, and just let it go just forgive you don't necessarily have to talk to the person and be like I forgive you but just put it out there in the universe that I forgive this person for da 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 da, -da. and I forgive this person for da 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 and I hope they forgive me for da 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 da, -da you know and you will start to feel your spirits lifting so anyway fast forward to my 22nd birthday I'm 22 now I'll be 23 in about a month um so this was a year ago almost and my 22nd birthday <sighs> The night was just annoying. Um, I had feelings before that I shouldn't have it. Going against that instinct, when you have when you have something inside of you telling you not to do something and you do it, that brings on anxiety and depression and all of the negative stuff too. When you go against something that says, I should not do this, but you do it anyway, that is your soul your guidance communicating with you and when you go against it it never ends up well for you it never does so start listening 
to those things, those little inklings. And when you start listening to it, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger, and you will see it in your everyday thing. It's not going to be a once in a while thing that something tells you, I shouldn't do this. It's going to be an everyday thing. But anyway, fast forward, I had I had this little get together or whatever in the hotel room. Um, it was I had invited a few people that I was hanging around with at that time, and um, you know the night was just kind of annoying. I didn't really get to enjoy my night um, because it was just so much different energy going on. You know, I had to i felt like i with this guy he was very like insecure and jealous and stuff so i felt like i kind of had to be on guard with how how i was talking to people even though we weren't dating we were not dating you guys but i just didn't want the issue which he 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 made my night worse anyway because he was just acting out like he was being so jealous like he was causing a scene like the, some of the people that was there can tell you like how he was he was like mad at me for no reason because i was talking to uh, other people who was there other males or whatever and so i'm like well, what's going on he was just like making my night bad even worse and i'm like this is supposed to be my birthday I'm turning 22 like why why is all of this stuff happening even though even though something said bitch you don't need to do this and then i had took the money this is another thing too y'all i lost my car because of being irresponsible the money that i used that i was supposed to pay for my car my insurance i took that and spent that on my birthday and i lost my car don't be me don't be me thankfully you know that i didn't lose my life it was a, it was something material that can be regained and that can be you know replaced so i'm thankful that it was a car and not somebody's life or my life or whatever but i had put myself in situations where i could have not been here you know so i'm just thankful for that but yes just being irresp irresponsible being stupid there was no reason why i should i couldn't still have my car today i was just you know you know but you live and you learn from stuff like that but um yeah so i took that money and i spent it on my birthday thing all on a night that i didn't even enjoy i didn't even enjoy it um he was acting out it was just so much stuff going on and he was just like making the night even worse you guys and so then to turn around not only was he causing a scene and so i had pulled him to the side because i'm the type of person now where i try to talk to people one-on-one -on -one. like i don't like to do passive aggressive stuff no more i used to do that but now if i have an issue like i try to take my time um figure out how i'm gonna word things and i'm gonna talk to you like what's your problem and i asked him and he was he was just like he was yelling and and um so i was like okay so you're mad you want me to sit out here with you the whole night like i invited people here to celebrate me i can't sit out here and talk to just you the whole night when i invited people here you know and he was mad so he left and he came back the next morning you guys and just <laughs> he sexually violated me he did he did and i was very like taken aback by it because i was like and it took me a while to be able to just say it say it for what it is it took me a long time y'all a couple months ago i was not able to say that that was not what i just said was not able to come out of my mouth i was so in denial about it um but yeah so he did that and you know i was like but why like because we had we had did those type of things before so like i didn't understand why you would do that you know um and so that just and then that was on top of like still not really being hurt i mean healed over the hurt of my breakup and how it ended and you know then another guy does something like this to me like so i was just all around a hurt girl okay and that brought on my anxiety that brought on my depression 
that brought on a lot of stuff i was very insecure i was not confident in myself so now like when people try to tell me like like y'all being arrogant like i don't never try to i'm very humble number one but when i want to feel myself and i want to give myself some encouragement honey i'm gonna give it because if you know what i know i came from not having no confidence i came from letting people take advantage of me and my heart i'm still i still have a heart old it's just that in my situations then i wasn't surrounding myself around the people who would cherish that they would take advantage of it and so no i'm not i'm not i'm not backing down my i'm not watering down my confidence for you honey you better water up your confidence like be around me so i can rub off on you like i'm not rubbing i'm not watering myself down for nobody no more like i came from i came from hurt I came from times of despair and sorrow so like there is no way that I'm watering myself down to make you feel comfortable you better go find you you better go get you some other friends mm -mm. because I'm all about encouraging myself but I'm all all about encouraging other people too so that's what makes me different from being like a person who just arrogant and cocky because yes i encourage myself and i feel myself but i, I also want to encourage you and i want you to be the shit too okay believe it believe that you the shit because you like don't let people make you feel don't let people cross your boundaries don't let people make you feel inferior like you're not good enough like i came from all of that and i worked to get this confidence that i have now and i'm not letting nobody knock that down for me but i don't care what you say you can say i'm ugly tell my hoe i was a hoe at one point uh -huh. the things i did and the way that i acted back then was ugly but it's that's not who i am now what you say out of your mouth don't affect me you know what I mean? And then a lot of times, it really be the people who still hurting and who still upset with how their life are going and their life choices. And so they try to put it off on you like something is wrong with you and what you're doing. No. It's, it's something wrong with you. Okay? So, yeah. But it, 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 took, it took some time. I had to work. I had to work. I had to go. I had to cry. I had to... <sighs> Ooh, I had to visit some areas. I had to visit some emotions that I didn't want to visit. Now that I have uh, shared with you how I got to a space of depression and anxiety and worry and fear, I want to share how some of the steps that I took to like help pull myself out of that hole. Once you pull yourself out of that hole and you start to feel better, you're going to work even harder. You're going to want to work even harder to never go back to that space um, because it's a constant, continual journey. Um, and when you for at one time think that you're good and that everything is good, is that quick to be right back there. So. It's a constant thing, things that you can slowly implement in your daily routines every day to help you feel better and less anxious, um, less depressed. One of my main things that I did um, was I started writing. I just started, at first I started with just like a regular college rule notebook um, that you use for school and stuff. And I just started writing my thoughts. I started writing about how I felt during the day what happened during the day was it a good day things that i was upset with things that i didn't like i started writing all of that out and then it kind of brought me back to um like back when uh my middle school days where me and my friend we used to write songs and sing them together and we used to call each other on three-way we never did anything with them but we used to call each other on three-way and sing it and um, so it kind of brought me back to that love of songwriting so after just writing how I feel which I still like to do um, I kind of took that and channeled that and put it into songwriting because I like music so 
that's another thing it brought me to like I like to write and I like to listen to music so when I was feeling really bad though I needed music that uplifted me and lifted my spirits I didn't need to hear bitch shake your ass that's not gonna help me you know when I'm already feeling bad about myself so I had to filter what type of music I was listening to and I'm uh, my favorite song now is by the Waz group and it don't stop like I love that song that's a song I pl can pl replay on like 20 times 20,000 times and it doesn't have to be gospel music it could be any singer or artist who just has a good message or a good vibe Lauren Hill NDRE you know those type of people they don't sing gospel but they have good messages so I listen to music that made me feel better about myself that encouraged me and then along with that i also started watching self-help videos on youtube um you know a lot of us already have like if you already have an instagram if any type of social media that means you have internet and a lot of this stuff that you you paying for the internet use it for what it is i got a lot of free stuff on there i'm not saying that um you know medications for these type of things don't help i mean they can alleviate some of the symptoms but a lot of this self-help stuff is out there because somebody else has gone through this before and they have they're on the other end they're on the other side of that so i, I like to look at the people who have went through the rough times oprah 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 tyler perry all the great people most of the time they have went through something before they became who they are and so i like to look at the self-help videos and the motivational speakers who have been through stuff like i don't need nobody no cookie cutter like i want you to be raw i need you to be real with me like tell me you know and so some of the top people that i watch is bishop td jakes oprah lisa nichols um even Michelle Obama, she has some some good motivational talks. Ayala Von Zant, I love her stuff. Um, but those are some just some of the people that I like to watch some of their um, motivational and inspirational talks and things like that because they really do help and they they are the ones who like if you go to my YouTube channel because I watch them so much like on my history of suggestions or whatever they are the ones who come up first because that's who I watch and <laughs> and I, they have and I still go to them to this day even though I'm not feeling like anxious and depressed no more but I still sometimes I still just need a little bit of encouragement and they always have messages that I need at that time so find you some self-help people they don't have to necessarily be the same people that I like what I like may be different from what somebody else may like but there's a lot of self-help videos and a lot of self-help books maybe you would rather read than watch a video um like one of the books that I'm reading now that the guy that I'm dating now gave me is this you and your network by Fred Smith it's a really good book um I'm working on you know building business and stuff so it really helps um, it's a self-help book and then it also really helps on the business side too for you to recognize things so maybe if you don't like writing maybe you like drawing maybe you like dancing whatever it is that that you enjoy doing that allows you to express your emotion express your pain express your joy express your sorrow do it and i promise you you will start to feel a whole lot better another most important thing is to surround yourself around people who actually support you so if you know that right now in your circle of friends if i was to go to you or you was to go to them they ain't gonna be there you need to find you some other friends um or your family your family members it's, it's okay to talk to them like it's just surround yourself around people who actually want you to do better and who love you unconditionally and you can be a mess tonight and tomorrow they still love you the same um that is what that's going to be really influential um so even if you feel like you don't have like family or maybe you don't have a stable relationship where you feel like i could talk to this person about that uh, there are several organizations there's several things online there's several help groups that will that work to serve people in those instances people would rather you see you alive than dead so just reach out find those things like um 
even me like i'll make myself available for people that need like to just talk and just need somebody to listen and who's not going to judge them um so i that's that's what you need that's very influential and you know you can have a pet your pet can be your emotional support as well but it's very very good to have that human contact and just to be able to talk to somebody sometimes just somebody who's going to listen to what you have to say and who's not going to judge you and who's not going to cut you off you know every two seconds and ask you ten thousand questions and it, it's good to have at least just one person who you feel like i can go to exercising like i didn't i still don't do like strenuous exercise because i'm working up to that level but because i know where i am i'm not going to try to compare myself to what somebody else is doing oh yeah you could do that boot camp and run two miles in five minutes that's wonderful but i cannot i'm here and i'm going to do this 10 minute yoga video in the mornings <laughs> You know, sometimes I may go on a little walk or two, but I'm not about to kill myself, okay? So you exercise, exercise and keep your body physically active. I love to do like 10 minute yoga videos. Yoga, um, it helps bring that peace and that calmness and that tranquility that is needed in those times where you're feeling really bad about yourself. Like it just, it allows you to have a moment. It allows you to be in your body and just feel and be present in the moment. And honestly, after I have done yoga, it has helped lift my spirits. And I, you're simply able to do it at home because I know that I'm not the most physically fit and I probably look crazy doing some of the stuff, but who cares, you know? Um, so that's what I like to do. Um, but whatever type of exercise you feel like you want to do, that's beneficial and then uh also meditation and prayer if you're not affiliated with like a church or something like that um because i do believe that spirituality and religion are two separate things you don't have to be spiritual you don't have to be religious to be spiritual and vice versa you damn sure can be religious and not spiritual hello i mean look at all the shit that go on in the church okay but anyway connect yourself to some type of spiritual entity that has good vibes not neck because we do know that there are spiritual entities that don't have good vibes so we want to find a connection to good spiritual awareness and um there are several like um spiritual healers who cleanse your chakras and things like that like after the sexual in, uh, incident that i had i realized that i needed my sexual energy cleansed because it was just very hard for me at one point especially when i first started dating my current boyfriend it was hard for me to even like i wanted to do it because i cared about him but it was hard for me to have sex with him like like i said i wanted to but like just physically i could not and so um, there is you can go to someone who specializes in that type of cleansing or you can find you some guided meditation videos for that and it will help make you feel better now I'm not saying that you do all of these things in one day it took me some time to build each step each step and each thing and then you get better over time and I'm still working on uh, certain things doing it more frequently but I promise you, these things will make you feel better and your spirits will lift. And then you'll soon see that this anxiety, this depression, that was a thing of the past, child. So hopefully you hear me out and what I said. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it will help you. And thank you for watching.